Meditation is the center of the practice. We practice generosity to train the mind. We practice virtue to train the mind. But sometimes it's indirectly. But when you're meditating, it's directly focusing on the mind in and of itself. Focusing on the body, what you have right here, in and of itself, right here in the present moment. This is something each of us has to take responsibility for. Nobody else can focus on our breath for us, or do the work for us. When you're watching the breath, it's up to you to make sure that you're watching the breath. When you're evaluating the breath, it's up to you to be skillful in your evaluation. In other words, figure out what kind of breath really is comfortable right now. And figure out how to maintain it. Or to change it if it's not so comfortable anymore. And then when it is comfortable, how to let that sense of comfort spread throughout the body. All of this is work that each of us has to do for him or herself. But we take energy from a principle that the Buddha called admirable friendship. Associating with good people and trying to pick up on their good qualities. If you're meditating all alone, practicing all alone, it can get very lonely. And you begin to have doubts. But if you're with people who are obviously good examples, they remind you that, yes, there is goodness in the world and it really is worth working on, really is worth developing. The Buddha talks about two types of friends that are really worth treasuring. The first are loyal friends, people who go out of their way to help you. People who are happy when you're happy, sad when you're sad. people who protect you when you're heedless. The proper response to those kinds of friends is gratitude, and to help them in return. Admirable friends are people who have qualities that are better than yours. In particular, the Buddha pointed out four qualities, conviction, virtue, generosity, discernment. And if you're wise, you look for people who have these qualities, and then you try to emulate them. Conviction means conviction in the principle that your actions do matter, that you're the one making the choices. You can't blame other people for the choices you make. And your actions have results. They have consequences. So you have to be careful about what you do. This is a good principle to emulate. If you don't believe in it, you tend to be careless. And you can end up doing all kinds of unskillful things. And there's so many people out there in the world who say, your actions don't matter, just do what you want. Someday the sun will become a nova. The earth will burn away, so it doesn't matter what you do. But if you listen to those people, you get careless. It's how the world falls apart. And you end up having to suffer the consequences of your carelessness. But if you believe in the principle of actions that matter, you're more likely to do actions that matter in a good way, benefiting yourself, benefiting others. So this is the most basic principle in admirable friendship. 
because the other three build on it. Virtue is trying to be harmless, holding to the intention that you don't want to cause any harm. You follow the precepts in all circumstances. You don't kill, steal, have illicit sex, lie, take intoxicants. You find that you create a better life for yourself and you have a better influence on others. Generosity means being generous with your things, generous with your time, generous with your knowledge, generous with your strength, generous with your forgiveness. Realizing the principle that if you're going to receive happiness in this lifetime, you first have to be willing to give. And you become happy to give, realizing that something good does come from generosity. You develop good qualities in the mind. The world around you becomes a much more humane place. Because when you're generous, you break down barriers. If you put a price on things all the time, you're putting up barriers. The generosity tears them down. And the fourth quality is discernment. Noticing where you're causing unnecessary suffering. And seeing how it's related to your actions. And so learning how to stop doing the things that cause unnecessary suffering and to develop the qualities that will lead to the end of suffering. So when you find people outside who have these qualities, you should associate with them and emulate them, and that way these qualities become part of you. And if you think of the mind as a committee, you're strengthening the good committee members. You've got good friends inside. When these friends have been internalized, and even though your admirable friends may be far away, you feel like you're close. When we first were setting up Wat Meta, a lot of Americans came and said, well, now that you're in America, you have to change things. You can't hold to the rules you held to in Thailand. You can't do things the way you did them in Thailand, because now you're in America. Things are different here. My response was always the same. At the moment, I'm physically far from my teacher, far from the members of the Sangha that gave me support and encouragement. And if I change things from the way they behaved, I'll be far from them not only physically, but also emotionally and mentally. But if I stick to the good principles that they they taught the good examples they said. Then it's as if they're still around. This is the way admirable friendship works. You internalize the good qualities of your admirable friends, and then they're with you all the time, giving you support, giving you encouragement, giving you energy. because they're in no way separate from you. When the Buddha talks about the different principles in the practice, starting with the most basic and building up to the more, more subtle, he always starts with admirable friendship, because the people you associate with will color the way you look at the world, will color the person you are. the energy you put into the practice. So make sure that you hold to this principle all the time.
be loyal to this principle and it'll be loyal to you.